Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the Ultra Budget Bookshelf Speaker Review Series. In part one, we talked about the Mica MB42X. I hope you've already watched that video. Um, today, we're gonna talk about the Dayton Audio B652 Air, as this is part two. In part three, I'll give you a little sneak peek. We're gonna talk about the Polk Audio T15. But today, it's the Dayton Audio. Um, so one of the reasons I chose to include this speaker in the ultra budget bookshelf series that I'm doing is because one, there aren't a lot of budget bookshelf speakers under a hundred dollars, but this is another one that's fairly popular. Steve Gutenberg reviewed this and he, he was like really excited about it. He, he really enjoyed it. And I've discovered usually if he enjoys something, I usually dig it too. So I was actually curious to get my hands on it and try it out also. At $58 delivered to your door, it is the cheapest of the three speakers. The Mica is $90, the Poke is $99, but can be found for $69 on sale sometimes. This is $58 bucks delivered. So it's uh, it's cheap and it's good. All right, a little spoiler, it's good, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So what we've got, six and a half inch midwoofer, one inch AMT tweeter. The height is about 11 inches tall. The width and the depth are both about six and a half inches. It's not very deep at all, as you can see. Um, it's got a uh, frequency response of 70 Hertz to about 25 kilohertz. It's sensitivity is 87 decibels. And I feel like I'm forgetting something here. Ohms, it is a six ohm speaker. So what does it sound like? Let's start with the top. The top end, it has an AMT tweeter and it does call attention to it. And what I mean by that is you're, it's, it doesn't have perfect driver integration, okay? It just kind of is what it is. Um, and and I, I tried different like seating arrangements, being a little bit further away, you know, putting the speaker straight out into the room, grills on, grills off, etc. It just is what it is. It's a $58 speaker with an AMT tweeter. It's not going to have the best integration. Um, but the top end actually does sound very good. It, this is pretty smooth sounding in comparison to the Mica MB42X. Is it like a super smooth speaker compared to more expensive smooth speakers? No, just in this under $100 category, I'm going to go ahead and consider it smooth. Most speakers under $100 are very bright and very forward. So by contrast, this is gonna be considered very smooth for its price range. Um, the detail was okay. Um, everything was there, but like a smoother speaker that's it's not like it's on the darker side necessarily because it was still a bit bright here and there, but the detail is a little bit more in the background, unlike the Mica where it was like more in your face and forward. Um, the sound stage is kind of gonna be between the speakers. It's not really gonna extend out past the left and right boundaries. And there was really kind of nothing like crazy about it. The, the clarity was good, though in some uh, sections of like certain songs, things could start to get a little bit jumbled and that, that went for the mid-range also. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself here, but that, that is worth mentioning. Overall, I would say it's, it, it's, it's more on the smoother and re refined side where the top frequencies are more like rounded off as opposed to the sharper sound. Um, and the details are just okay. That's, that's kind of the best way I can say it. Um, the mid-range was fairly neutral, though it did seem to be a little peaky, kind of the same way the Mica MB42X was, where certain regions of the music were just a little bit exaggerated. For this speaker, that happened to be more in the vocal range. That's something I enjoy. So I thought that was a huge plus, actually. Vocals really seem to stand out on their own, and in fact were so good in some songs that the musical, musical performance, by contrast, sounded not as good. Um, now, if you're looking at speakers in this category, I'm guessing you don't have any, or you're really you know, coming from something even cheaper. So kind of no matter what you're gonna be experiencing an upgrade. So you know, when I mention these things that they're not the best at, take them with a grain of salt, right? Um, moving on to the base, this is a sealed design, right? There, there's no port whatsoever. It is a entirely sealed speaker. So that means the base that you do get is gonna be, it's, it's gonna be quick. Um, it's gonna to be tonally accurate, it's not gonna be bloated, but it's also gonna be somewhat non-existent. There's just not a whole lot of it, and there's really no nice way to say that. And on top of that, because it is a sealed design, unlike the Mica MB42X, where you can kind of tweak it with tone controls, you can't really do that over here. You can give it about one to two dB, and it'll give you a little bit more. You try to give it more than one to two dBs on bass, and that little bit of congestion sound that I talked about that could occur in some songs starts to happen a lot more and gets a lot worse. 
is the base just kind of starts to mud things up. Um, but like I said, the base you do here, it, it is quick, it is responsive, it is articulate. And the most important thing I would say about the speaker is top to bottom, tonally, the presentation is what I would consider correct. Like the amount of treble compared to the amount of mid range and like the way the bass sounds, just the whole harmony of that tonally is correct. Nothing was so exaggerated to the point that it just stood out and made the music sound fake or um, just, just like, I don't know how to describe it, but some speakers, especially cheaper speakers, they'll have this like wild V curve that makes everything sound so fake to me, almost like you're listening to a pair of like really cheap, like Skull Candy headphones, for example. And these don't do that. And you know, the Micahs didn't do that either. And I guess at the end of the day, that's kind of no surprise because even though this is an ultra budget uh, category I'm talking about, the three speakers, or at least these two, are like super popular in this price range. So, you know, there's gonna be some good things about them. Um, let's get into pros and cons real quick. So the pros, I really enjoyed the vocal performance. The price is definitely a pro and that's kind of where I'm gonna stop. Cons are gonna be the spring terminals, big con in my opinion, I absolutely hate that. I totally wouldn't mind if the speaker cost $5 more and had a proper five-way binding post, but I can kind of understand the design, the design decision as well. I mean, they've got like a little nail hook to be mounted on a wall and stuff like that, and they come with 20 gauge speaker wire. This really is like ultra entry level stuff. Uh, moving on, another con I found was the finish. Um, it, it did kind of like, it, it, it's coming off. There's kind of no way to say that. Right here, it's coming off. You could hear it. It's coming off and look, I'll prove it to you. I'll tap on an area where it's not coming off. You don't hear anything, but you can hear it because it's bubbling. So that was kind of a big disappointment. I'll try to show it to you. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. Um, it's gonna be like right there on the front baffle. Um, there was a part of me that thought, hey, at $58 that um, kind of paper thin, whatever you want to call it, wrap that's on it. Yeah, maybe, you know, it's it's going to come off. It is what it is. But then I was like, you know what? I remember when I was a lot younger and worked a minimum wage job and a speaker in this price range was like my budget. I would have been pretty upset if I spent 60 bucks of my own cold, hard cash, you know, and, and, and like was excited to get something that came like kind of already damaged. So I hope Dayton Audio addresses that and gets that right. Um, it, it is a shame because the sound quality of these speakers are pretty damn good for $60. Um, and, and this is kind of like the only real con because of the five-way binding post, that's kind of like my opinion, but I think we can all agree that nobody will be happy to buy something new and it be kind of like damaged or coming apart in some way. So moving on, um, ultimately these are speakers that I enjoyed quite a bit. I had these on the stands for about two full days before I was like, okay, I'm sick of them. And you know, that's nothing against them. The speakers I normally listen to are $1,800. That's a lot more than $60. So I'm used to a level of like refinement and quality that is way higher in comparison. Um, for what it's worth, the Micahs lasted about a day on the stands. And, and I'm not saying these are better than those, but I preferred these a little bit more than those because I like a little bit of a smoother presentation. Now in contrast, that brighter presentation that the Micahs give you, did lead to a way more open sound and a, a sound stage that extended beyond the left and right boundaries. Whereas these are gonna give you more of that kind of like, I hate to say like analog or like record sound, but that's kind of the only way I can describe it. It's like that old school sound. I can honestly see a lot of older guys really digging these speakers. Um, but uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up the review there because I don't wanna get too much into comparing these to the Micahs because I still have to review the Polk Audio T15s. And then after I review those, I'm gonna do a final video where I talk about all three of the speakers at the same time, how they compare with each other. And the goal in that video is to help you make a decision on which ultra budget bookshelf speaker is right for you. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And just real quick, we use these speakers the same way we use the Micahs. Um, we use the same kind of like cheapest cables I had laying around. I use the IOTA VX SA3 integrated amplifier. Most of my listening I did without a subwoofer. Obviously they need a subwoofer. Anything in this ultra budget category is gonna sound better with a subwoofer. Um, tone controls I had on these, I had minus one on the treble and plus one on the bass. I think that's kind of everything you need to know. So that wraps it up guys. Ask any questions in the comments and until next time, later.